And now it's time for the trek upstairs. See what treasures await. Found three advertising signs so far on this pick and we're gonna see if there's gonna be a fourth. Last weekend I was away filming a car show and so I missed an auction and a buddy of mine called me afterward and said, hey, the scrap man bought this Chevy van with a 305 700R4 combo. He's like, do you want it? He'll take 400 bucks for it. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess so. So I'm on my way up to the place where they had the auction and Apparently, not only did the scrap guy buy vehicles, he also bought pretty much every contents of the buildings, sheds, garages, whatever. I think everything except for what was in the house. And he was basically gonna take the metal and stuff out of those for scrap. So pretty much told me, hey, come pick make a pile, make a deal. So I'm headed up here and it's gonna be a little bit of a total mystery pick. So I'm gonna take a look through, see what I find. Yeah, now you can pull the back end back over. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yep, that's working. That's good, right right there. Yep. Let her down. Let her down, yep. Cool. So here's a pile of stuff tossed out for trash. Somebody tells me it's trash. I kind of take that as a bit of a challenge. So we're going to look. I bet there's some value in here. There's a red aluminum harrow for a child's toy tractor. These little guys, it's actually pressed steel ladders for a toy fire truck. Top of a toy plastic aircraft carrier, probably from a model kit. Interesting monkey puppet. It's kind of far gone, so keep these. Brand new Ziplocs. Take a car apart for restoration. Those are good for getting parts organized. Grab a tub like I'm shopping. Oh man. Old photo album, seriously? Missouri bound, hard to read. I'll go through these with the sleeves off. You'll probably be able to tell better what they are. Somebody's. 90 year old photos just tossed. There's more of them, wow. There's a 68 to 88 Grand Marquis manual. We got the, hey, you can fix up the Chevy van. This old. Truck manual. It's like super hot out here, so I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time. Got antique car matchbooks. This old paper works just kind of interesting. New York Central. Notebook. I'll sit in. Yeah, an old newspaper. 
I like looking at these for the antique car ads. There's a bunch of them in there too. Throw that in the basket. Man, who knows what's in here. We've got wood dough, like Play-Doh. Here's farm book. Oh, I got the Vickers automobile record book. Cool piece. Velveeta with a Lego building toy offer. Oh sweet, those are antique typewriter ribbon cans. Mint condition. Got the old stamp collection. Cancelled, so no collector value, but they do have interesting historical value. Sweet. Back together later. Throw all that in. There's a big pile of junk out here I've already been picking through. So I'll take you around, show you what I found. Tons of wire baskets. These came from Beatrice Foods in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I'm going to pull around, load all them up. Got tons of them. These are really handy. Got stuff to store outside. Rain doesn't rot your crates or break your cardboard boxes down. Got some wheels, Ford Fairmont. Chevrolet, Mercury Comet. Found this cool old pair of vent shades for an antique car. Got the vertical baskets there. One more section. Another big pile of baskets. Found some antique. RMs that I'll get out. Nothing too special, but they've actually been stored under this satellite dish out of the weather so the beads won't be all rusty. So I'll take them out. And there's one more section. I'm gonna dig in here for some of the baskets on the bottom. And there's like that old road sign. Oh man. Pepsi Cola, 60s or 70s. Not in primo shape, but it's a good day when you find an old sign on a pick out in the wild. Cool.
There is one more shed down here on the auction day, which I wasn't here for. So we were filming at a car show that day. In this shed, they had a 31 Chevrolet Roadster. They said the guy had built way, way back in the day. And then there was a 49 Ford two-door sedan. I think the Ford was in this hole. So, I've been invited to pick in here. There's a wire basket on the ground. Some of them, when they sit in the dirt, they get rusty. So, we'll pull it out, see what shape it's in. There's a nasty old rat infested wood box. Not much. There's a 49 Ford wheel. Probably take that for Joe. He sells those wheels at the Rust Ranch. And every old shed has some old tires. Just looking, looking, looking. Bicycles. Not too old or valuable, really. Probably someday, but they're still pretty common at this point in time, especially around here. What we do have a good basket with the top. And here's a, another basket with a tall handle. It's like basket palooza out here. This might have been for collecting tennis balls, possibly. The craft people repurpose it any number of ways. Got another Small basket there. These old doors people buy. Just never know what's in one of these old, these old windows people buy. Chevy van's full of stuff, and it's like 105 today, so I'm going to work as much as I can, clean the trash out of the van, put the good stuff that I groom back in it, and then we'll see how much motivation I have left to keep going after that. Kind of a cool Hudson sprayer. Back from the silent spring days. And I don't know if anybody buy these mesh racks or not. I'll take a chance on them. People close pin notes on the walls to stuff like that i don't know shedding that plastic though yeah i'll leave them behind can't save it all there's one more man i know that logo i know that logo Rainbow bread. See the R A I N B O. The other side any better? No, it is not. But a sign's a sign. We have kind of a sign crazed bunch of people in the collector world right now. So even 
toasted like that, I'm still going to haul it home. So there's one more outbuilding here. Saved it for the last because it's hot. It ain't getting any cooler, so I just got to do what I got to do here. Man, there's an antique. It's like a 29 Chevy gas tank. And we've got this an antique rag bucket. It's my dad actually sells these at the flea market. So that's a good piece. These stainless lunch trays. Those are a question mark, but they don't take up any space, so throw them in. If it's a question mark and it takes up space, on a load like this, and I'm hard hard pressed to grab it, but something like smaller pieces. Really nice basket, but it's full of a bunch of stain and stuff. I'll have to put that emptied out on the shelf. It's a lot of work doing these cleanups, but they sure can be rewarding. Like, here's a brand new set of hanging hooks put your bike and your ladder up in the garage I do find Coronado badge that's off like an antique freezer you gotta look for the old oil cans too which I don't see any in here Okay, just scan the shelf. They're really odd, probably 30s era cast iron scale. It's a cool piece. Take that for the flea market pile. These old steel funnels. Those will sell. Nothing too great. Whoa. Jensen Water Systems Thermometer. Not great subject matter, but any of that old advertising sells. Here's a whole, whole box of sandpaper. Edges have been wet, but cut them off, use the good parts. So, got another steel crate. Some little antique fan from a camera, maybe.
There's an antique home built air compressor, kind of cool. Somebody used the old wagon wheels or pedal car wheels. There's a steel trunk off the back of an antique car. Another cool mesh basket. This guy like had a fixation on mesh baskets, honestly. You got a hanging rack, that's particle board. Not antique. I'd say that's probably about it for what's in here. About the end of my limit. One more side of the garage here. Stuff's kind of been raided on sale day, but I always... Just look, there's a can of liquid wrench for the can wall. 501 cans as of today. And, oh man, we got the antique loopster suite. My dad likes selling these at the flea market. That's a good small one too it'll display nice place is chock full of finds so i bought the van from the scrap guy it's got a title it was supposed to run and there's a bunch of junk in the back i'm kind of cleaning it out because i gotta make space to put all the wire baskets and under the headboard Surprise, we've got a third sign. So I'm going to pull that headboard out and reveal what it is. So here it is. The Coors Rocky Mountain Waterfall Clock. Plug it in and see what happens, but I think there was some kind of light up animation in there. Not spectacular, but three signs on one pick is kind of cool. It's a good day. Kind of getting dark on me, so I gotta hurry. But there's more actually upstairs to take a look at. Although I spot couple things down on the bench here to grab. Got the 49 Ford rearview mirror. Got a vintage home light chainsaw oil can. Nothing spectacular, but it is specific vintage brand. This is a vintage alternator. This one's got the original one-piece pulley. So that's a desirable thing for somebody rebuilding an antique car. We got the Ham's Beer bottle opener. And in the back, we've got the Big Boy Co-op. Transmission oil can. Cool piece. So now it is time for the trek upstairs to see what treasures await.
they dig around before the auction for the stuff to set out, but that doesn't mean there's not still things to be found. This is a cool piece of homemade fan out of a barrel drum. And we have got Beauty rings. Oh man, antique radio. That green fiberglass piece is actually the speaker that goes on the transmission tunnel below the dash for like 57 and 58 Pontiacs. So that's a good piece. Another wire basket. Oh man, are these... Oh, I thought that was like a 32 Ford headlight. Just a... Aluminum pot was all... If I had more time, I'd dig in these, but... I just... Don't really right now. One quick scan. Looks like mostly hot household kitchen stuff. There's a cool old Chef Master Deluxe hot dogger. Somebody was refitting an old diner. That'd be a cool relic to go in it. Oh man, what do you do? Just want to make sure I've found like three signs so far. I think that's a blackboard back there. I just don't want to leave a fourth one if there is one. You know what I mean. Norway rat, man, such a destructive, invasive species. You can see they just chewed right through the window there and came in to nest. Filthy pests, man. Okay, we got like a vintage copper brass radiator. That's a cool piece. One last chance for a sign, and no. No sign. Is this a... Man, a Yankee mirror? Ah, oh, man. NOS... Yankee bullet mirror in there and then we got the square type that's like a copy of maybe a 59 Ford or something cool man NOS chrome can't beat that think I'm gonna take all the ah low clearance for my head ow banged my sunburned forehead but had I not may not have thought to take a look up here this would be a place where there might be signs laid too but You're doing these picks like this, you just gotta find a little bit of the mentality and the mindset of the people that owned it and kind of get in their head a little for where to look, where stuff's hidden and squirreled away. And some of these places, like when they're like really super, super loaded full, you just gotta stand in one spot for a few seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, and just look and scan. Otherwise, you're going to miss stuff. But they've been through this, so I think that's going to be about, about through it for me as well. It's about 110 in here, and 
I don't take heat so well. So, I'm gonna grab these radios, the mirrors, the radiator, the beauty rings, and wind this one up. It'll probably be a little more of the video. I'll show things laid out, maybe. You'll see how long the video is. Scored some cool records on this pick, too. You can always tell a lot about somebody by their taste in music, and I think this guy's a pretty chill dude. I mean, obviously he built a 31 Chevrolet hot rod back in the day. So you've got Hot Rod Rally. This Charlie Ryan one is actually somewhat valuable piece. Surfer Girl, that's like the 1973 version of that one, a little later. Little Deuce Coupe. These are like hot rod drag strip clips. Somebody just went out there and shot audio, which is pretty cool. Got Buddy Holly. 65 Teen Beat. Little Honda and GTO. Tommy James and the Shondells. One of my favorites. Les Montgomery. Hello, lady. Pretty cool assortment of records. I'll probably keep those. I have a thought someday that one of these picks, one of these old houses, there's going to be a console record player thing and I'll probably put that in the garage here and have some tunes while we're working. These are kind of cool. These are like businessmen's records. So there's like sales and just personal memory and development enhancement. Uncork your talents. Are you a prisoner? <laughs> yeah, I'm a prisoner to a all-encompassing, life-swallowing hobby, lifestyle, and profession known as old cars. I guess I can be grateful to be stuck with this form of mental illness. Otherwise, I might have a different form that was worse. How to size people up correctly. Yeah, I pretty much wear my hobby on my sleeve. This one's really cool just for the graphic art. I love old silhouettes and nuclear atomic mid-century looking sketch drawings like that. So that one almost to me is cool enough just to hang up on a wall. Newspaper unfortunately is almost all apartments and real estate. However, there is one automotive page my choice would be the 62 chevy panel truck needing the transmission i'd scour the junkyards find a transmission put that thing back together and haul around all kinds of cool old vintage items there we go you've got your wrecks repairs parts and your motorcycles Read through these old ads and it kind of makes you want to have a time machine with a very large cargo hold. And there were a couple older newspapers. November 11 of 1918. End of World War One. Very, very dry, old, fragile paper. They're pretty neat to look at. Old history there. 
bottom one has the terms of surrender all spelled out. More old relics of their time. Out of one of the buildings, there are some incredible old photos. Here you've got the 1930-31 Model A Coupe. Look how proud these people were of these old cars. This one here is super neat. Acme Plumbing Company. It says this was taken May of 1926. These old photos are just a window into time gone by. This just about 100 years old. Be there real soon. Then you've got the little bit out of focus Wolf Cycle Company. And I'm trying to read something tread tires. Anyway, probably old hand painted sign there. Got the Model T Roadster pickups couple C cabs C cab panel truck with the little tarp sides just fascinating old relics very very old pictures in here this is a proper Victorian lady in London then you got your builders putting a porch on an antique house before it was an antique. Very, very old pictures. Certainly well over a hundred years old. Ah, oh, look at that, your World War I soldier. So I paid the junk man a lump sum for all of the picks that I made. Feel like I did pretty decent on this stuff. Some of the wheels and tires I'll use. Bunch of it I'll send with my dad to the flea market. Some really good surprises in here, including some of these old signs. I'm getting close to having enough stuff to probably do a flea market space of my own. So stay tuned for a video on that later. Also, I got over 200 art and photography books, including topics like art history, art style, and technique. If anybody's local, I'd make someone a deal on all of them. The Chevy van had been sitting for quite a while, probably 20 years. Brute Beer Brown, great relic of the 80s. He had driven it up here to Kansas from Texas. Does have a title. The body's very straight, rust free. It is a long van. I know the short version has a little more collector value. So, not really exactly sure what to do with this old van. Like any other collector vehicle, the outcome for it really depends on who's looking, how much it needs for repairs what the market value is, and which others are around in comparable, better or worse condition. So, it doesn't have to be decided today what to do with it. It has been sitting around quite a while, and the interior does need a lot of work. It had been customized back in the day. Some of it's still usable, some of it needing completely reworked. Unfortunately, the curse of the 305 continues, and this one is locked up, just like many of the others that I've had over the years. I enjoyed picking this estate. It was neat to see what the gentleman was into. Photographer, artist, collector, old hot rod builder and a Vietnam veteran.